Amen. Thank you so much. And a pleasure for me to share from the word of God on this Sunday morning. Um, greetings to all of you, wherever you are joining us. And the topic, what I want to share from the word today is, I tell you the truth. Right? I hope that my nose won't be growing longer than me while I try to tell the truth. I'll stick to the word of God. I will not stick to my truth at all. But before we get into it, let us just open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this another day which you have created. We thank you so much, dear Father, for your word that you have left us with and your Holy Spirit that guides us into your truth. Oh God, as we explore the truth of your word today, Lord, we pray that you reveal it unto us, dear Father. Open our eyes. Those who may have been blinded or have scales over their eyes, that Lord, you will remove them so that they can see you oh god that they can see your love towards them towards us oh god we pray for the truth of your word to resonate with us today in jesus name we pray amen so as i said i want to present on i tell you the truth and i think it's appropriate to discuss this topic seeing that a lot of the conversation lately has been about truth you might hear conversations in your circles, people talking about my truth. And it's always a my truth versus your truth kind of a thing. And <laughs> you wonder sometimes then what is really the truth? Some persons might say, well, I've been trying to live my truth. I mean, I was listening to Takari Richardson, who's, she's all over social media now seeing that she, she lost so badly yesterday. But even before that loss, after she was caught with the drug, she, she mentioned it again, you know, the reason why she took the drug and her truth came out. And persons were sympathetic, sympathetic towards that, which is usually what has been happening lately. People have been saying, well, we can disagree. Your truth is your truth. And my truth is mine. Or I admire the way you speak your truth. But then, to say that your truth is truth and my truth is truth, and if they differ, it therefore means somebody is lying, or the two might be lying. So we need to define what is really truth. So unlike either of these phrases, where you say my truth, it really means my opinion or my experience. So we need to see what really is true, because it cannot contradict itself. Truth can be defined as, can I just turn the slide for me? It can be defined as that which agrees with final reality. And we read Psalm 119, and we look at verse 160, where it says, the sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting, meaning the truth doesn't change over time. A lot of times we, we, we get textbooks at school, right? Or even the very dictionary that we get. You can't keep it for more than two, three years before a new edition comes out. It always has to be updated. However, the Bible, yes, it might be in different translations, but the word of God remains the same. It doesn't change. It is the absolute truth. And in this day and age, when we talk about my truth, it also comes into play when we, we, we talk about gender. And this is a very popular topic now. And I know our brother, he, he spoke here recently, our brother Daniel Thomas, with Love March Movement, tries to highlight or shed light on the truth when there are so many lies. So I read an article on medical news today, which says, and I'm going to quote, gender is different than sex. Although genetic factors typically define a person's sex, gender refers to how they identify on the inside. Only the person themselves can determine what their gender identity is. And if we were to dig deeper, you go, you see that they highlight 52 different genders. Well, that is at the time of my reading the article. In Australia alone, 
there are about 23 different genders. For example, you have cisgender, you have gender fluid, you have omnigender, and the list goes on and on. And you might get confused by the different meanings of the different genders. So when someone sometimes wants to identify to one of these genders, sometimes medical changes are done, which cannot be undone. So as they might have to take hormones or get gender affirming surgery. And this process is called transition. Well, <laughs> if I confuse them, I'm sorry, but I agree with the transition part. It's a transition from truth to a lie. Because the truth of God's words tells us is male and female. That is how God created us. And our identity is found in Christ because we were made in his image and likeness. So <laughs> the word, the world tries to distort the truth. And later on, I'll talk about how the enemy distorts the truth to try and make it fit into him. And his whole agenda is to be, or for us to be less like God. So confusion all around when it comes to gender. Again, definition, that which agrees with final reality. That is how we can define truth. The entirety of your word, as it says, is truth. Everyone of your righteous judgments endures forever. Thy word is truth. This part tells us that it substantiates the word of God as the only truth. Whatever is contrary to the final reality, anything that contradicts the word of God, therefore, is false. Let's look at John chapter 17, verse 17. And it reads, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And if you read on to verse 19, it says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself. I mean in Jesus, sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified by the truth. Jesus Christ himself, who is the living word, sanctifies himself so that we may also be sanctified once we are joined here. Because we are joined here with him, we are sanctified in truth. Galatians 2, verse 5, to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. This is not a popular view today, as many of us know. As soon as you start to quote from the word of God, people get turned off. That is not by coincidence or chance. The enemy is at work in that. He makes the truth unappealing. It is not sexy enough. Lies are what sells, our papers, our news. We are bombarded by it. social media. People only want to see what makes them feel good. On social media, you are popular by how much likes or how many followers you have. Nobody wants to hear hard truth. Anybody that speaks hard truth is disliked. You're not popular. It's even tied to your jobs. Some of us keep quiet in our jobs because if we speak out against what we see going against the word of God, we are at risk of losing our job. <laughs> well, brothers and sisters, if you name the name of Christ, you're a Christian, this is our calling. We're called to be light and salt, light bearers. Let's be impactful. Speak the truth and speak it ever. <laughs> That's what one of our gems say. Cast it what it will. But let us go on. John chapter 8, verse 31, 32. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the, sh and the truth shall make you free. There is no other gospel or truth. Anything contrary is false gospel. Right? And again, we see that I'm going to go to the word again. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 to 10. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. As I said before, there's no other gospel. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you 
than that you which we have preached to you let him be accursed as we have said before so now i say again if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than that what we you have received let him be accursed so the word of god tells us clearly there's only one gospel even if myself or any other speaker were to come on here and tell you a different thing we should be accursed it is not of god truth is pers personified in jesus christ and jesus christ alone he is the living word he is the only way the truth and the life as we read in john 14 verse 6 no one can come to the father but through him so we have defined truth and remember truth is that which agrees with final reality if it doesn't agree with final reality it can't be true just as our days of old, they thought the world was flat. And that's what they taught in schools. Until one day somebody sailed from point A and, re and reached back to point A. We realized that, well, the world cannot be flat. It must be round. Well, thank God we don't have to go and investigate for ourselves. God lays it out in his word, all truth. We just need to believe it and trust it and walk in it. Let's examine how the enemy works because his own aim is to distort the truth so let's examine a lie from genesis the first lie ever told was when the enemy said to eve you will not surely die god said you will die now but he now comes contrary to final reality and says you will not surely die and that word surely, so I'm using it. It doesn't mean that you're not going to die, you know. <laughs> surely die, so you might, you know, not die, die, but, you know, something else. Well, if only Adam and Eve knew what we know now, is that we'll die because we have eternal separation from God. No longer could they have fellowship with God in the cool of the day. Because, of course, God has no fellowship with sin. His eyes cannot even look upon it. The enemy also said, your eyes will be opened and you will be able to be like God, to know good and evil. That part, semi-true, therefore it's a lie. They did know good and evil. However, they knew good and could not do good. And they knew evil and can only do evil. That's the difference. Right, so it's eternal separation from God, spiritual death. It's also physical death because of pain and strife in life. Our bodies cannot, we're not made for that. So it is going to die. This flesh will pass on, it will die. So it's physical death, pain and strife. And there's also curse because God had cursed the woman, also cursed the man and also the snake. So, so many different types of death happen yet still we believed it because he distorted the truth and sold us a lie. From that moment on, the enemy has been telling lies. And sadly, he has been using the same lies over and over again. And we believe it. We all fall for it. Because the Bible tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if you look at it, his whole aim from the very beginning was to be like God. We're talking about Lucifer here. He was the top angel, one of the top cherubims in the rank of heaven. And because of his pride, if you read in Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, it tells us, it tells us of how prideful he was in his appearance and his, his knowledge and what he could do and his rank, that he thought that he could overturn god he didn't need god he wanted to be like god he wanted now to elevate to the position where he would receive the praise and adoration of all of heaven and earth and of course that was his downfall him along with the, the angels he convinced to try and overthrow the king of kings and the lord of lords and because we are made in the image of god he doesn't like that and he wants to keep us as far from the image of God as possible. So what was the first thing he attacked? 
or image, even with this gender thing as we spoke about earlier, it is so far from what God says who we are and whose we are. In our marriages, it says marriage is supposed to reflect the fellowship God has with his church. But now they're legalizing the same-sex marriage. Some countries are talking with the idea of you can now legally marry your pet or even child marriages. Well, a lot of this goes against what God says is what marriage is supposed to be. Isaiah 14, I want to read verse 12 to 15. How oh, you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How oh, you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. And anyone who lives a life in honor of the enemy, in honor of Lucifer, will also join him in the lowest depths of the pit. He still wants to be like God in us. I don't know why he thinks he still can be. But the more persons he can blind, is the more his kingdom will have. The enemy, the enemy will always try to be like God. He is a deceiver. Do not be deceived, my fellow brothers and sisters. Do not be deceived. He is still trying to destroy the God image. Do not allow him to do that. Know the truth, and the lies will become obvious. The enemy, as I said before, tries to distort the truth so that we can, he can convince us in settling for less. Just like Adam and Eve, they settled for less. They lost the promises and the blessings of the Lord. In this day and age, too, he wants to convince you to settle for less. Like the prodigal son, we find ourselves sometimes feeding at the pig station without even realizing it. We are butter battering through life, settling for what God did not promise us. This is just so far from whatever God had in plan for us. But like the prodigal son, we need to return to our father. Our father is there longing for us to come home. His table is well spread for us. It's just for us to join him at the table. There's no ritual that you need to do. There's no, there's no, nothing you need to add to your resume. God just says, come as you are. Come and I will accept you into my kingdom. So we are fearfully and wonderfully made. If he cares so much for the lives of the field, then my brothers and sisters, how much more does he care for us? We just need to trust him. Trust him to take care of us. So basically, I want to encourage us to live and walk in truth. Don't be that guy, right? None of us need to be that guy. Like in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 25, let me read it for you. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God, incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. That is evident today. Persons taking the word of God, distorting it to fit their life and their truth. There is only one truth. There is no my truth or your truth. There is only one truth. And if we decide to live 
in this manner, as described in Romans 18 to, to 23, goes on to tell us what will happen. 24, it says, Therefore God also gave them up to unclean, uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. If you are living your truth, and it's not God's truth, then you're living a lie. The truth is, there really is only one truth. What are the lies, you might ask? It is not for us to try and study them. As a popular analogy is made in banking, we are taught to study the real notes and the counterfeit will become obvious. Likewise, as Christians, we just need to study the word of God and the lies will become obvious. And of course, God has not just left us on our own. He has given us a helper. We have the Holy Spirit who is our help. The Lord has left us at his ascension. He says, I leave with you someone like me, like himself. Therefore, the truth he has left with us, dwelling within us, those who name Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We have the truth with us. So do not be deceived by the enemy. The Spirit of God, it says, will lead us into all truth. We are living in a time when people are easily offended. People don't want to hear that they are in need of a savior or that he is the one truth. People want to feel good, as I said before. Social media, you are judged by how many likes or followers you have. And it, it comes into our church, sadly, where people, we, we, we are afraid to preach a message that might offend somebody. We must leave church feeling good. Nobody should be challenged or feel dirty or uncomfortable. We must preach to feel good. And sadly, some churches do that because they want people to come to their church and fill their cupboards. Some preachers water down the word of God to conform to people's feelings. <laughs> what a dangerous place to be. This cannot be. This cannot be. So therefore, I want to charge you just as in 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 5, it says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears. They will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to lies. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. You don't have to be called to be an evangelist to do the work of an evangelist. It doesn't have to be a spiritual gift. We are called as a Christian to do the work of an evangelist. So I request of you, my brothers and sisters, in closing, just a few things. Three things I want us to focus on. If you want to live in truth, you must speak the truth. Speak the truth. Put away lying from among us. Let each one of us speak truth with one another. Secondly, let us walk in the truth. Let us be exam exemplary. If what you say is true, also do the truth. Put it into action and let us walk in truth. Worship, thirdly, in spirit and in truth. Just as John 4, 23 and 24 tells us that true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. He is seeking for such to worship him in spirit and in truth. We cannot worship in spirit and in truth if we're not speaking the truth in the first place or walking in the truth. These three things I want to leave with you. Let it be on your minds and etched in your memory as, you, as we leave from here. 
Let the word go with you, that you speak the truth, walk in truth, worship in spirit and truth. And we also need to remind ourselves of the truth. Sometimes we kind of forget. I'm guilty. I'll hold up my hand to that. I might preach this word now and then go outside and somebody trouble me. And everything I just talk, jump out of my head. Only for the grace of God while I am here. While I can speak, I can walk, and I can worship in truth. I need to daily remind myself not to be negligent of the word of God. And also to be an example, not just for myself, but for others who might be looking on. So these words today, which I've shared with you, I want to pray that it would stay in your heart, that you would teach it diligently to your children, to your loved ones. Talk it with them. When you go on the road, when you're on the bus, at, at, at work, at supermarket, let it be on your tongue. Walk in it. When you lie down, meditate on it. When you rise up, meditate on it. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Keep it on your forehead between your eyes. Let the word of God go with you. Keep it on your doorpost throughout your home. Pray in every corner of your home. The enemy should have no place in your home, nor in your heart. And in therefore, you can then speak the truth. You can walk in truth. You can worship in spirit and in truth. May the word of God dwell with you richly. Amen. Everyone just say the truth.